distinguished chair, Dr. Amit Gam Sahab has said that they have to be doing it. So perhaps I am the only one who will be dwelling upon legal aspects. Okay. So majority of presentation presenters are from science background and technology and investments in that area. So my area is legal perspective of India's concern in Brahmaputra River. Of course, there are 250 rivers, more than that, that is being shared between more than two states. Some of the rivers are being shared by nine, six, eight, nine states. Brahmaputra is being shared by India, China, Bangladesh. Of course, China is upper Liberian in, the, in this situation. And India and Bangladesh are lower Liberian. So India's core, core concerns with respect to Brahmaputra is of course, you know, that the hydropower construction by China, construct building of dam by China, flood during the time of monsoon, drought during the time of uh, non-monsoon season, and diversion of water by China from, from, uh, from south to north. So both India and China are, are, are water scarce, of course, but these are some of India's concerns, okay? So the fundamental international rule is that, that a riparian state, each riparian state is entitled to use the water. Is entitled in pursuance of permanent sovereignty over natural resources. Okay? But as a, as a upper riparian, China is not entitled to say that the since river originates on my side, so I can, I have the entire right to the water. Or neither India is entitled to say, that the river is, since the entire flow coming to this side, entire it should get all natural flow. Okay, so this is the, so the, the context is that that the India China they don't have an agreement. Neither is party to any multilateral treaty. Okay, China voted against United Nations Convention on Water, 1997. They don't have bilateral agreement. Likewise of Indus Water Treaty. Okay. That India and China, India and Pakistan might have fought many wars that they have the they have the bilateral treaty and that the Indus Water Commission is there. Okay. So India has no access to what China is doing. Neither bilateral, there is neither basin level commission nor multilateral. Okay, so India's concern is of course Jinping. So what is the what is the what where is the what India should do in this situation? So the fundamental rule that I have just that no state is entitled, no state can use its territory in such a manner that results in transboundary harm of a serious nature. Okay? It should not go ahead knowingly that runs in contravention of others' rights, equal rights. Okay? So this is the standard rule in, in a situation of shared natural resources is no harm, not to cause Significant, significant harm. This is the standard rule. But how this will, this is the this is the standard of conduct. This is the standard of care. Whether you have taken reasonable steps on your side of the territory or not, this is the approach. But what it actually means in practical terms. Okay, we are all aware about environmental impact assessment. Experts are sitting here, Gulf Sahab is there, all those are there. So International Court of Justice in pulp mill case between Uruguay and Argentina, it said that the interstate notification of a project or a, or a activity having transboundary consequences, transboundary impacts, potential transboundary impacts, it has to notify. It has to notify the riparian state. It has to, China is bound to notify India that it is building a dam. It wants to do this, it wants to do this, it wants to divert water, notify. China is not doing interstate notification has to be done. Okay. So interstate notification, International Court of Justice in pulp mill scales says that interstate notification is about conducting of transboundary environmental impact assessment and sharing of the transboundary environmental impact assessment with the riparian states. 
So even if there is no bilateral agreement between India and China, so China is bound to conduct transboundary environmental impact assessment and share it, share it with India. So, but the International Court of Justice has not identified the core, the, the, the scope of the transboundary environmental impact assessment, what, what, what it will actually comprise. It leaves it to the domestic jurisdiction. It leaves it to the domestic, domestic jurisdiction that the China will decide, India will decide, Bangladesh will decide in its domestic jurisdiction what actually what will be the scope and content of the transboundary environmental impact assessment. Okay? So, so <coughs> but, but the International Court of Justice has said that they, you have to take into account that they, whether it is what you have actually done, the impact assessment, it has to be done before going ahead with the project. Court of Justice has also said that you have to do before going ahead with the project. Not that they, you have done something and you want, you are conducting transforming, you have to find alternative also. International Court of Justice is saying that, that this uh, TIA has to take into account the magnitude of the project. If the magnitude of the project is huge and you have done a minimal transboundary environmental impact assessment, in the case between uh, the, this pulp mill case between Argentina and Uruguay, Uruguay is the name of a river. Uruguay is going ahead with the pulp mills. Argentina objects, they have a bilateral agreement, they go to the International Court of Justice to find a solution there. Okay? So, in this context, International Court of Justice has said these things. So India, India can say that the China is not has not done transboundary environmental impact assessment. So, so its its, its concerns are genuine, genuine. Now, India is not party to the United Nations 1997 Convention on Water. It should do, in my observation, that they, it should it should do. At least it will have a forum where it can say that the India's Water Secretary is quite, has said a number of times that we don't have access to the information. We don't have access to the information. China built Jammu Dam. China wants to build other uh, sets of dam on the upper reaches of Brahmaputra River. Okay, in its, if you see the, its five-year plan, recent five-year, it, it proposes to build a number of uh, hydropower dams. It wants to build hydropower dam on the Great Bend area of Bhamputra. Okay? So India's concern is that the, that the amount of water that will be flowing to its side is going to be lowered. There will be less... Yeah, just finishing that. So the, so the conclusion is that the, that the, you are getting less amount of water. The, the point is that India, of course, has this India that the only thing is that they, both India and China they have memorandum of understanding relating to sharing of that is MOU. Hydrological information sharing is there between both the countries. No no bilateral agreement. India can take this pre transboundary EIA, but my submission in this that day that the India in order to address India's core concerns, at least India should be party either to the United Nations Water Convention nineteen ninety seven or European Convention that's a 1992, United Nations, European Commission, Water Convention 1992. So at least it can take care of India's concerns to, to some extent. Thank you very much for giving me presentation. Thank you, Thank you. Dr. Garza for inviting me and, 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 and gracing the occasion. Thank you very much.